that. All right. It's been a while since I've done a tutorial. <laughs> but uh, I'm going to keep chatting to a minimum so I can explain what's going on. Um, there's going to be no audio playing in this VOD. There's also Spotify music in that VOD, so that's obviously going to end up muting the video, which I don't want because it's going to go on YouTube. So I'm just going to play a bit of background music <clears throat> and uh, explain what the hell's going on, I guess. This is pretty, pretty like self-explanatory, like I'm not going to explain every little detail. You know the drill, just the important stuff. I guess mainly the difference between any percent and all bosses and many bosses. But yeah, there, there's two Sekis. I'm the smaller one, this is me. That, that's... Get a load of this guy. <laughs> but yeah, I did this run in uh, 2 hours, 26 minutes and 26 seconds. Which is a lot faster than I thought I'd get it. I thought it was like a 3 hour run, but... I got through it quite speedily. I did, I made like probably one error in my routing where I had to backtrack and I lost a bit of time, but I think this run was pretty solid. So obviously this is the first major change, you've got to fight Yamauchi in the tutorial. He can be pretty tricky. Uh, there's a chance a mob might run up your ass and hit you, that happens occasionally, you just have to reset, there's nothing you can do. He will just poke you in the butt. But yeah, my advice for Yamauchi is just do your R1s nice and slow, don't rush it. You just need to find the right pace. Uh, I usually pick up that Ash there in the beginning, because we do need quite a lot of Ash in this run. Considering it's all bosses and mini-bosses, there's a lot of Ash you need. <laughs> Welcome in, guys. Thanks, Gun Destiny. How you doing? Nothing much to say about Genny. Everyone knows how to fight Genny. Dude's a little bitch. Uh, right here, I'm deflecting the thrust. Honestly, I, I advise everyone to start learning to deflect the thrust. It's the best thing you can do, honestly. I'm sure you've lost a lot of runs to trying to dodge that thrust. I've said this a million times, but deflecting a thrust, or deflecting in general in this game, is the most consistent thing. It's always better than dodging. Most reliable thing in the game. And if you can learn to deflect his thrust, it can save you in a lot of situations, especially fighting a Ashina Castle Genny. Yeah, again, he's pretty easy. You hear to land from the master? I've done a few tutorials before, but it's been so long. I figured I'd make one for this category. Thanks for the congrats. Yeah, the start, the start of this run is pretty straightforward. Um, <clears throat> I usually grab the Arco Sugar in this cave up here. You don't need a lot of Arco in this run because you're mainly going to be using Yashi Sugars. Uh, and since this is all bosses and mini bosses, we will be forced to kill a Yashi Headless. Which means we will have an unlimited supply of Yashi Spiritfall. But you do, I would, I would still grab a few Arcos along the way for the early game bosses. Uh, pick up this Ash here. You're gonna need a lot of Ash, like I said. The majority of it you'll be able to buy from merchants, though. Pick up the Shuriken Wheel, of course. Uh, a lot of people ask why I skipped this boss. It's because I find him much later in the run when I'm more powerful, so I would I would not try fighting him this early. Unless you want to show off. Uh, and yeah, pick up this gold in the outskirts, you're going to want that so you can buy firecrackers. And ash. 
of course, grab the butterfly bell from the old lady. Do not forget this, because you will lose your run if you forget to grab this bell. Garchin sugar down here. Really important. Now I always rest at this idol here. This chicken will sort of alarm the enemies in the area, so I always rest just to make sure to reset all the aggros. You want this idol so you can walk back to it later. You need it to come back to the generals. So you can get a bit of a stealth death blow on the ogre here. A bit of a speed run. The way that I do it. You just pop a garch in. You can actually backstab him here, yeah, which a lot of people know already. Uh, if you fail to get the backstab, don't worry about it. You can just run back down the hill behind the gate. If you just hide behind the gate for a second, he'll lose aggro. And then you can just run up and backstab him. Yeah, I see a lot of people, like, if they fail to get the backstab, they'll just try fighting him straight up, both phases. It's just pointless. I probably wouldn't fight him this way, this is a bit of a speedrun strat. Uh, the safest way to fight ogres, honestly, just do three hits and then dodge, three hits and dodge. You can fight him like by just kiting him around, or you can just strafe around him like I do. Now this is where we go for the, the bell demon, which I guess you don't have to do it, but I'm just showing off. Pick up the confetti though. Don't do this jump, this is a speedrun jump. <laughs> Don't learn from this, stop it. You will fucking die if you try that. More Garchin. Yeah, you can lose aggro. If you're fast enough, like as soon as you miss that death blow, if you run back down the hill, hide behind the gate, out of sight, he'll just lose aggro immediately. Like you don't even have to wait. Yeah, obviously avoid confrontation with that Arco Headless, you don't want to fight him yet. We fight the Headless like much later in the run, when we have more attack power. This is where I usually equip all my shit. Arco, Ash, Garchin, and Idol. You don't have to equip quick items, um, like I used to never use quick items, I, used, I just pause the game and use them from my inventory because why not, it, it literally pauses the game, unlike Dark Souls, it's safer, though the menuing in this game is pretty sketchy. Canyon skip, you really think I do canyon skip and no hit run? <laughs> that should be like a separate category. No hit run, but with canyon skip. The way I go through here is a bit of a speed run way as well. Like, when I jump down here, there's a possibility the snake will aggro, which he didn't. If he does, just hide behind that pocket on the right there. If you see the little red arrow indicating that he's seen you. But you shouldn't have to worry about that if you go down the normal way. Also a bit of a speedrun strat here, I kind of just run past the little hut. The speed. You don't have to do that. Now there's an Arco up here, and I usually always rest at this idol here just to reset all the enemies pathing in the area. Just makes it a little safer to get through this area. Hey, thanks for the congrats, girlfriend. Hope you're doing well. Arco here. Now just quickly jump up. I usually backstab this guy because he can actually shoot you while you're grappling up the top. Grab the coin purse.
Okay, now, now we're fighting Yobu. Now this is definitely one of the most dangerous bosses in the entire game to do hitless. I'm not even kidding. I always start with six hits. After the sixth hit, I chase him. You don't have to do this, this is risky, but I, I chase him and deflect him. Now if you deflect him, it actually stops him from running away. Again, I stop him from running away here. He will stagger eventually. You can play Gyobu a lot safer than this. If you deflect the last hit of that combo, he staggers as well. I always space myself out enough to deflect the last hit. Now Gyobu's, Gyobu's pretty hard to deflect, that's why a lot of people play him safe. Just he's, he's kind of wonky. Because kind of depending on which way the horse is facing, it obviously changes the deflect timing. It varies depending on, you know, distance from the boss. Where exactly you're standing in regards to the boss. You can actually get a headshot on him when he leans down like that. It does heaps of damage. Just make sure you always grapple him as soon as you can. If you fail to grapple him in time, he will charge at you, like he'll do a spear charge, and it's pretty much impossible to deflect the entire thing. If all else fails and he does manage to get that charge, the best thing you can do is just iframe it, like just dodge to the side when he gets close. But you do not, you do not want to miss a grapple on him. That's my best advice. Uh oh, I'm eating snacks. Yeah, this will be on YouTube. Uh, pop your memory here that you just got from Gyobu. You're gonna want it for bull. Hey, thanks Al, how you doing dude? Oh, I'm straight vibing, look at me. I was listening, listening to some bangers at the time. Yeah, the, the chat on screen is from last night. Yeah, you want to kill this rat to uh, continue the storyline. You kind of need to kill him so that you can talk to Tengu up here. And then uh, he'll give you the, uh, the skill book. That allows you to get the carp skills, which are pretty helpful. Now this is where you're going to use that gold that you picked up. Sell all your gold. Buy all the ash, all 12 of it, and firecrackers. The ash is pretty important for this run. And so is the firecrackers, of course. So you just hand in the quest, get the skill book. Warp to previous idol. Bull time. Bull is a heavy reset point for a lot of people, even it, like it means me over time. You should just play bull the safest way possible. Just stay on its ass. If you if you can play claw, it helps a lot with just playing unlocked. But you basically just want to stay on bull's ass the entire time. Now, there's a big difference here in the bullfight when it comes to playing it on hard mode, like Bell Demon no Kuro Show. These mobs in the arena actually have enough vitality to survive getting rammed by the bull. So you gotta be really careful here. I always pop a confetti, it does it just does more chip damage. I usually try to finish at least one of these off with a thrust attack. That'll do enough damage. Just try and get bull to run over the other one. But be careful. You can actually poke both of them with one hit, if they line up nicely. I usually try to get Bull to destroy some of the debris. Or the, you know, the towers and the solid objects in the arena. Yeah, conf a lot of people ask why I use Confetti. It actually increases your damage to like every enemy in the game. 
It does more damage to ghost type enemies, like apparitions, but it does actually do more damage to regular regular enemies too. So for bosses like Bull, where you're mainly doing vitality damage, it's really helpful. It's pretty useless if you're fighting a boss in a sort of parry fight. The thrust attacks are really helpful for catching him while he's sort of power sliding. You can keep him in a bit of a loop like this if you just stay on his hip. Kind of dangerous, uh, but you can get a lot of damage in this loop. Just be careful like when he's pinched you in a corner like that, you want to make sure you dodge out of the way. You can just get in really unfortunate spots in the corner where it's it seems like almost impossible to dodge out of the way. But if you time it right, you can just iframe it. Um, I always warp out here. If you actually warp to previous idol after killing the bull, it warps you to the next idol here. It's just safe. It's just a safer way of getting past the mob at the door. Even though it's pretty easy to get past him in the first place. Just a safety strip. Backstab this guy in the bridge, he gives you the key to get the spear. This is a bit of a risky speedrun strat, but you can actually wall jump across here. To get the spear early on, otherwise you can go the long way through Ashina Reservoir. You can use Arco and the Bull if you want, I don't. If you have enough Arco to spare, yeah, go for it, but I don't like running in there and buffing twice, that's all. Uh, walk back to Dilapidated Temple now that you've got the spear, and make sure you pick up that heavy coin purse. You're going to need as much gold as possible in this category, because you're going to need to buy uh, Dragon Mask. Well, I mean, I heavily advise you buy Dragon Mask, because it makes it a lot easier. As well as... You know, like among other things, you will need to buy, uh, like Yashi sugar and pacifying agents for the Shishman warriors. You're gonna need to buy more confetti later on. So this is where I get my three major prosthetics. Make sure you talk to Sculptor, exhaust his dialogue there. He'll give you another skill book. So now you've got three skill books. Make sure you learn Mercury Counter, it's very important. Do not forget, you will probably forget. <laughs> it looks like I'm going AFK here. I honestly don't remember why I went AFK. Oh, I was, Hi, welcome to Chili's. I was showing my figurines. I guess I'll let this play out. Yeah, I'm showing my Sekiro um, Collector's Edition and also my Dark Souls 3 Collector's Edition statues. And wait for it. Wait for it. I'll show you the big boy. Hey, thanks, Huey. How you doing, dude? Here comes. Boot and walk. Here comes a. Uh, here comes a. Uh, Wait for it. Boom. It's actually really big. <laughs> hey, thanks, Lamont. Why am I stalling? Come on. Yeah, it's a, uh, it's figure, what are they called? First four figures. Yeah, I managed to pre-order that. Like I, I literally pre-ordered that over a year ago. All right here, you want to just stand here until his yellow bar fills up fully, then quickly hide behind the, the roof. The reason we do this, uh, 
it doesn't quite fully aggro him, it just alerts him and it makes him walk over to the edge there. The, the edge of the roof. So when he comes to the edge, you want to pop your Garch in. And as soon as he loses aggro and walks back, you, that's when you want to go. Some people, I mean most people backstab him there, you don't have to. You can just run past him. Run along the left edge of the roof to avoid the Woo guy, of course. Ah, oh, there's Ash here, pick up that. Rest of the idol. You're gonna want to walk back to this idol later. Be careful not to run into the uh, breakable walls there when you backstab him, because he will get alerted and turn around. <laughs> I've, I've had it happen before. There's Garchin up in this roof you want to grab. Jump down, there's Arco. And then quickly go through the hidden door. There's more gold in here. You don't need the prayer bead, of course, and a no hit run. You just want the gold. Then walk back to previous idol. Now, the run isn't on YouTube. This will be going on YouTube. Because I, I had music playing and it's muted in the original VOD. Bit of a speedrun thread here, you can uh, jump straight up to Genny. Now I do a speedrun strat on Genny here too. Um, this is actually pretty easy to learn, honestly. But you can cheese like phase one and two. By doing kind of, they called, I call them uppercut attacks actually like a block attack like I'm holding L1 to raise my guard and then I'm pressing R1 to attack a lot of people don't do this because it's pretty like it takes a bit to learn to get consistent at but basically it's it's AI manipulation I'm getting him in a corner and I'm hitting him at an angle where he can't block me it's called dead angling it's been it's been in Souls since Dark Souls 1 but uh, if you just space it out, like you don't even have to do this quickly, just space it out nice and slow. Um, you shouldn't fuck it up. And you actually want to slow it down because um, Genny occasionally jumps up in the air to try and perform his bow shot attack. And if you space it out well enough, it'll actually stagger him out of the air. If you do it too quickly, it won't stagger him and he will hit you. So I always pop my arc over before I get that second death blow. Then get ready to Makiri counter him in phase 3. Again, like not much to really tell you about Genny. Everyone knows how to fight Genny. He's actually safer to fight in phase 3 because he doesn't have his bow shot attack. Where he jumps up in the air. Of course, you just, you gotta iframe the lightning. You can't do lightning reversal as everyone knows. It actually damages you. So it counts as a hit. Phase 3 again is super easy. Why is it allowed? Why not? Have you seen some of the other cheeses in Souls games? It's not a glitch. It's AI manipulation. You're simply putting him in a corner. And you're hitting him at an angle he can't block it. It's pretty much just poor arena design. Yay, dialogue. Yeah, this part's kind of boring, but uh, there is an important bit coming up where I do buy Yashi Sugar from, uh, what's his name? Black Hat Badger. So, I always do this after I kill Genny, just, it's more efficient getting it out of the way earlier on. After you talk to Ishin in the tower. Pop your memory while he's walking so you don't have to 
sit around and wait. Exhaust all of his dialogue. Nah, I just jump straight off the edge here. You're allowed to take full damage in a no-hit run. It doesn't count as a hit, a lot of people ask. No, it doesn't. Pick up the Garchin. Pop a heavy coin purse. Because this guy does- you can't sell stuff to this guy, so you just have to pop it from your inventory. Buy all three of the Yashi. Idle back to previous. Yeah, I got the run, dude. That's not Ryuri. Grab the Gunfort key. And now we're gonna go to Sempo Temple, so I just walk back to Ashina Castle idol. Yeah, yeah, this chat is from last night. <laughs> uh, you can just run straight past these guys. Some people shuriken the dogs. You really don't need to unless you're like... Re unless you're talking to the merchant or resting at the idol or grabbing an item here. Which you, you don't need to. I can't remember why I paused here. Ah, oh, fuck. <laughs> we were looking at memes. I love Toby Maguire. I always grapple along the, the top here. Some people don't do this, but I just do it. I, I really don't like these crickets. <laughs> uh, there's, there's more Arco here. You don't need it, but and if you want. Just be careful of that gunman. See how I sort of... Uh, I went along the edge. Just be careful, because that gunman can aggro you. Um, like, if he aggroes you early, he, he can actually shoot you. So just be careful. Hey, thanks for the congrats, guys. Uh, I'm going to be getting into speedrunning after this. Getting back into speedrunning. Run into the poster on the wall so the NPC stops talking. Grab some more Garchin. Now you're kind of going to want to be praying for Garchin as you're going through Sempo here because uh, you need a lot of Garchin for this run. If you don't get all your Garchin here while you're running through Sempo, you will have to come back later to farm it. I think I got like one Garchin from one of these rats. So these rats in Sempo, um, they actually drop Garchin, so you can farm them. Hey thanks Marv, what's up dude? Yeah, there's more Arco on the ground throughout Sempo.
Just be careful here, these guys can actually throw arrows at you and throw shurikens. Make sure you kind of jump to the left of that branch, otherwise you will miss the grapple point. Make sure you grab this idol, it's very important. Because you will need to come back here later to Garchi and farm. And you don't want to be running back through Sempo later because uh, apparitions will spawn in. If you just stand here, this rat will just hop off the uh, the cave wall and he won't see you. Make sure you crouch before you approach this guy or he'll turn around and shiv you. More Garchin on the ground there. Yeah, this is where you, you'll be farming Garchin. Some people just run straight past these rats. I would kill them just because there's a chance I'll drop Garchin. And they can also throw shurikens at you, so it is not safe to just run past them. Unless you're really confident. So we're coming to Roberto. I always pop a, an Arco for this. And then switch to my... get my Ash out, because I'll throw a Firecracker. One, two, Ash. One, two, three, four, five. He'll stagger. You only have to deflect him once, then you can get like another five hits in safely. Deflect his Berserk combo. I can get four hits in here, because he'll stagger. Deflect once. Again, get five hits. Or I think I went for four there and then corrected my positioning. You just want to make sure he's close to the window, of course. You don't want to be having to break his posture multiple times. He's got very delayed attacks. You kind of just have to practice him a lot. Because you'll probably, you'll probably deflect him too early a lot of the time. Make sure you grab this idol as well, because you'll be warping back to it later to fight Centipede. Okay, so be pretty... you want to be careful on this part. Follow exactly the same path I take, sort of on the left slant of the roof. Because you don't want the rats to see you, because they can throw shurikens at you. Now make sure you pop a Garchin here, otherwise those monks might see you. You gotta be pretty quick coming through here because you want that Garchin to last long enough uh, for monkeys. The stealth depth low on that guy. You can, the, uh, these monks can drop Arco Sugars as well. Hey what's up Kato? Yeah, go straight into monkeys while you still got that Garchin up. Obviously kill the invisible monkey behind you. Now you want this Garchin because this, this orange monkey won't see you if you've got the Garchin active. You quickly take him out. And the green monkey, you can actually firecracker him before he gets away. Now I play monkeys really safe, some people do this the more speedrun way, I do it the most, the safest, most consistent way. <clears throat> Which is to open this door at the back and lure the monkey in there. This way, uh, if you do it this way, you won't actually spawn in any of the aggressive monkeys. The aggressive monkeys are only spawn in if you get close to the purple monkey. So as long as you stay at a safe distance, they won't actually spawn in. So if I, if I just grapple up here, the purple monkey will see me. As long as I don't touch that roof the purple monkey was on, the aggressive monkeys won't spawn in. They sort of crouch around this corner because if you come into this room too quickly, the purple monkey for some reason sees you and he jumps back up. In that case, I would just go into your inventory and reset using the uh, the bell. And then just lure him back in there safely. 
there's no point trying to rush this fight. If you spawn in those aggressive monkeys, they might hit you. And even if you reset the area with the bell, they, they won't despawn, so... Just play it really safe. We've got the Mortal Blade now. I equip it straight away so I don't forget. As well as Blood Smoke. This is where we buy our first skills. Do you want to pop the memory? Alright, now this is... I'll probably... I'll slow it down here. So, you want to buy... These skills. Whirlwind Slash. Midair Deflection. Shinobi's Karma Body. Midair Combat Arts. And Suppressed Presence. Suppressed Presence is really important. For this area we're going to now, Gunfort. If you have a Suppressed Presence, it makes Gunfort, like... Literally 100% consistent. Uh, Gunfort is... It used to be a big run killer, but we've now got this really, really consistent strat. I, I, I don't think I've ever been hit there running this category. Not once, so... Why not carp skills? We don't get the carp skills till we actually get to centipede. We don't have enough XP. Uh, and the only carp skill you want to get anyway before centipede is ascending carp. I'll show that later. You don't use well when you just need to unlock it to unlock the next skills. That, that, that was a bit of a risky speedrun strat there. I did the wall jump. You don't have to do that. <laughs> if you fuck up, if you fuck up that wall jump, you will uh, fall into the abyss, and that counts as a hit. So be just be careful. Uh, I should probably highlight this part. If you watch how I jump down this cliff here, it's actually... If you just like, sort of, grapple onto this, and then hug this wall, grapple here. This is the safest way to do it without aggroing this gunman. If you do it this way, there's no way he'll be able to shoot you in time. Just keep that in mind. I always kill this lizard because he can actually poison you before you cross over this ledge. So make sure you kill him. You want to pop your Garchin here. Don't get too close to that gunman because he will aggro you and shoot you. Gotta just do a nice arc around him. Okay, now what, as soon as I, just before I land here, I actually crouch, and you can get a stealth death blow on this Snake Eyes. As soon as the gunshot, as soon as you hear the gunshot, Snake Eyes should turn around. And if you're quick enough, you can get the stealth death blow. So yeah, you can just parry, do mortal draws. I usually, when I run out of spirit emblems here, I just start doing regular R1s. And if you pull back on the analog stick every time you parry her, it actually baits her into kind of a bit of a loop where she only does melee attacks uh, with her gun. Otherwise, if you don't take that step back, she can like kick you and shoot you. So make sure you pop another Garchin here, or it runs out. Otherwise, the, the gunman will see you. Okay, this part is pretty important. This, the way I do this strat is I I count each sort of rope that I'm, I'm passing. I count to the fifth one. So one, two, three, four, five. I stop at the fifth one. And then I stand up for a couple seconds. I wait for like two ticks of the yellow arrow and then I run. And I jump at the third from the last rope before this hole. So, it is one, two, three. I jump from, I always jump from the third from the last before the hole. If you do this the exact same way I do, you'll never get shot. It'll, it'll line it up perfectly so they shoot just after you jump. I always do this little jump to the side to make sure that I don't get shot. Crouch in the corner here. Wait for them to lose aggro. See you later, Ozzy. Have a good one, dude. I actually grappled out there a bit early. 
by accident, but I I always pop another gacha in here. You don't have to do this. This is just for safety. Um, like you can just stealth death blow these gunmen if you want. I actually got aggroed here, which is not meant to happen. This was kind of scary. I could have gotten shot. Usually he doesn't aggro you though. The Garchin makes this part a lot safer. You want to rest as soon as you hit this idol. Sometimes you'll get kicked out of the idol before you can rest. If that happens, just run down to the, where the centipede is. Don't, don't quite enter the boss room, just run down there. And then you can just walk back to previous idol. So there you just saw me buy the um, ascending carp skill. This is the third page. So you gotta buy Ichimonji and then Ascending Carp. Ascending Carp makes Centipede a lot easier. So this is where I use my first Yashi on Centipede. Pop the Yashi, switch to Ash, Firecranker, Jump Mortal Draw. Parry him, you'll need to parry him nine times to break his posture. I throw an Ash straight away, I always wait. Wait till he's about to come out of Ash to bait out this attack. This this threat's kind of complicated. Um, you wanna... It's kind of complicated for me to explain why I do this, but I'm just gonna show you how I do it. As soon as he comes out of Ash, you wanna run away and bait out whatever attack. He's either gonna do the quick slash or the 10 hit combo. When he does a 10 hit combo, you, you must deflect on the third hit of his 10 hit combo. Otherwise, you'll probably end up blocking one of his attacks. I don't know why, it just, you'll end up blocking it. So I run away, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10, run up, ash him, mortal draw him, run away. Doing the quick swipes, head stomp, and he's dead. Takes a bit to learn this, but it's really consistent. It's probably the best strat I've found doing a centipede. He always, in phase 2, switches between the quick slash and the 10 hit combo. Um, so if he does quick slash, you can head stomp him, and then you'll know that he'll do the 10 hit combo after that. So it's safe to just parry it. But if he does, if he starts with the 10 hit combo, like I said, you want to start deflecting on the third. The third swipe. If you start on like the second or the fourth, sometimes for some reason you'll just end up blocking one of the hits. Grab this idol, you need to walk back to it later. I don't know why. Centipede is really buggy and he's just really terrible to fight hitless. Yeah, you should be able to get through this area safely without Garchin, like, sometimes the monkeys will try and shoot at you, but they shouldn't hit you. Pick up the pacifying agent here. Grab this idol. Now, we're not going to fight Ape yet, we'll come back to him later. We're going to go down and fight Snake Eyes in the depths. Oh yeah, I always rest there as well to lose the aggro of the monkeys. Just in case they try to shoot me or something. Hey, thanks for the congrats, dude. Now, there's more ash down here that I pick up. You can actually just shuriken these lizards and they'll die in one hit. Uh, kind of unnecessary. You don't want to risk hitting that snake because he will just go ballistic. Bit of a speedrun strat here, I just jump to the side and grapple. If you want to do this safely, you can just use the, uh, the puppeteer ninjutsu on the monkey. That's what I used to do. Pick up the confetti here. Pop a Garchin. I always take out this gunner here just for safety.
And I also pop a, an Arco for Snake Eyes here. So you can get a jump model draw as she's standing up. Does mega damage. A lot of people ask why jump model draw. Uh, it just basically does more damage. I'm not going to go into detail why, but it does. So that's why uh, mid-air combat arts is really important. Because jump model draw is going to be... One of the most important things in this run, when it comes to fighting mini bosses. Same with mid air uh, prosthetics. So you saw me just equip um, confetti there. That's because I'm going to need it when I get to Orin. Make sure you grab this idol here. You'll need to walk back to it later. Multiple times. It's really important you get this one. So, yeah, I just sort of grapple through this area. It's the safest way to do it. Uh, safest way to avoid the chickens. There's Yashi Sugar down here. Really important. Do not fall down <laughs> to the Garchin Headless. Pretty easy to do. Pick up the Snap Seeds. We're going to use these snap seeds on Ghost Monk. This is a bit of a speedrun strat again. You can jump up on this tray to get to Miss Noble. Pick up the Yashi here on the ground. Speed run grapple. <clears throat> Not the safest way to descend. <laughs> uh, you can buy Garchin from this merchant. Really helpful, so you don't have to farm so much later on in the run. Now rest of this idol straight away. You want to be quick here because there will be actually a mob chasing you. So this is a bit of a sketchy strat. It takes a bit to learn. Just play it as safe as possible. So with Orin, we kind of do a bit of a cheese. Um, you want a firecracker to grab her aggro. Now the reason we do this cheese, <laughs> this is a bit of an excuse, but it's pretty valid. Orin has uh, an attack where it's unblockable, like you can't parry her entire combo. So we kind of had to figure out a cheese for her. You can pull her across this bridge. If you get her right around here and get her in a bit of a safe zone, she won't actually attack you back. Well, that's if you do this correctly. So if you kind of strafe around her, the safest way of doing it, rule of thumb, you get three hits and then dodge to the other side of her. I kind of like... Grind her up against the wall here. It doesn't matter which side you do it on. You don't want to. You don't want to push her too far up the hill. See that? See this little. Uh, this little like statue here. You don't want to push her any further past this statue because she can. She will like fight back and hit you. And also, you don't want to. You don't want to let her get too far towards the bridge that she came from either. Or she will fight back. Uh, you kind of just have to trial and error practice this. Sometimes I might do four hits from one side to keep her centered. Yeah, just... You gotta keep dodging around her so she doesn't fight back. I equip the snap seeds there. Uh, sometimes, like, she might be a bit sketchy and you might just want to walk back and try again. But yeah, it takes a bit of a bit of practice to understand it. Pick up the confetti. Pick up the coin purse. Yeah, now this is another sort of cheesy strap. 
I'm gonna run around the edge. Snap. Snap. Firecracker, firecracker, dodge, firecracker, firecracker, firecracker. Snap seed. Wall jump off the pillar. Death loot. Easy. You can use more firecrackers or ash if you want to pull her back further towards the pillar. That's just the fastest way of doing it. Rest of the idol. I always switch my confetti back in. And then just idle to previous. <laughs> Render against the wall. Pop your memory. Now this is where we're going to buy more skills. So you want to get the second um, spirit emblem skill here. Shinobi's Calm and Mind. Then... I buy Chasing Slice. Uh, you don't actually want this, but you need this to unlock this skill. Now this is really important, mid-air prosthetic tool. You really want that for later on in the run. And then of course just buy Descending Cup. Now that's pretty much like all the important skills you need. You actually don't need to buy any more after that. That's all you need. And then warp uh, back to Ape. I pop a, an Arco for this. You don't really need a, a, a Yashu. Kind of unnecessary. I guess I'll explain how to do the Phase 1 Ape Cheese. Now this takes a bit of timing to do it the exact same way I do. Um, as soon as he like slams the ground, that's when I throw a Firecracker. And then I walk towards him, wait for him to put his hands up in the air like this, and then do a Mortal Draw. If you time it right, you'll stagger him like this. And then if you just do a thrust attack, and then one, two, wait, wait for him to reset, and then one, two, three, four, five, one, two, wait for him to reset his animation. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, wait for him to reset. One, two, three, four, five, one, two. You can keep him in an infinite loop. Now, if you screwed up the mortal draw in the beginning and he doesn't stagger right, you can just do like a second mortal draw to stagger him. But it's pretty easy to get him in that loop. If he escapes the loop, um, best thing I can say is just get him, try to get him to around half HP. And then once he gets to half HP, he'll start doing the jump grab attacks. Which you can easily just strafe and punish uh, until you can stagger him again. If you can manage to stagger him again, you can get him back into the loop at any time. So phase two, I play it really safe. I basically just stay at about a medium distance and I bait out a single attack. Which is his low sort of swooping attack. I'll show you in a sec. It's this one, one, usually it's a one, two, or a one. Stay, stay back from the flurry, bait out the slam. You can punish this with the spear. The spear does mega push your damage. Yeah, you've got a huge ass arena. You can play this nice and slow. You can jump over that dive attack. It's actually a bit of a, a sweep attack. Yeah, just be careful of be careful of your surroundings, you don't want to get cornered by that scream. But yeah, safest way i found is to bait out this attack. Doing the flurry again, I always step back, I unlock to, to see his hand coming down. You can get one, two, and then the spear. Dash forward, get three more hits. As long as you jump, you will always avoid that attack. Yeah, one, two. Slam. Let's 
one, two. Get an extra hit in there if you want. I try not to do too many two, uh, extra hits because you don't really want to stagger him. Staggering him can be dangerous. So I always just parry. One, two, and he's dead. So for this category, you want to be really careful. Um, if, you, if you're running all bosses and many bosses, do not pick up the flower. By picking up the flower, it starts Owl's Invasion, and it will despawn all the mini-bosses in Narshna Castle, like Elite 1 and General 1. So if you're doing this category, do not grab the flower yet, just warp out. I go back to Riven Cave, I think it's called, Idol. Now this is how you get the Dragon Mask, or the scales for the Dragon Mask. Which, it, it, it makes pretty much any run a lot easier. You get a much more attack power. Pick up the scale, the Yashi Sugar, kill this fish. Pick up the bulging coin purse in the water. Well, there's lots of money there. I always sort of swim back here for safety. Walk back to Dilapidated. What's up, Kim? Now you can do this Dragon Mask strat in pretty much any, any run. Like, well, obviously not sure, but immortal, even in Immortal Severance, you can do this Dragon Mask strat. It's really safe, it's free, I don't see why not. The only thing you have to do is kill Shinobi Hunter. Um, actually, you don't even need to kill Shinobi Hunter, but if you want to get Miss Raven, um, which I highly recommend doing for Ishin. The Dragon Mask itself is actually really free. Uh, yeah, back here, I actually, I get the finger whistle. You want to make sure you grab this before you go and fight uh, General 1. You need it. Pop the memory. Walk back to Ashina Castle, Antichamber. No worries, I appreciate it. Riori, thanks dude. Have a good one. What's up, high charity? Okay, so you, again, you want to make sure you have your blood smoke equipped. This makes this part a lot safer. Backstab this guy, pop the blood smoke. Just a bit of a safety strat. Run upstairs and rest at the idol. Reset all the enemies. Now this is the safest possible strat I could come up with for Elite 1. You can actually, if you have Suppressed Presence, you can get a Stealth Death Blow on him. If you pop a Garchin. So you want to be really careful entering this door, make sure you hug the right side of the door as you're entering. Hi, welcome to he, otherwise he can't aggro you. Just walk around the right edge of the room. Pop a Yashi Sugar for this, a backstab, wait for him to start standing back up, stand back a bit, get a jump, model draw. Now I always back off here, and I, I wait for him to come close, wait for to see the flash on his uh, sheath, and you only have to parry him once and he's dead. Just be really careful on Elite 1, because he can actually shove you, which does count as a hit, even if it doesn't damage you. Um... Just be careful of that. That's why I, I try to stay as far back as I can. So he can't shove me. You can kind of tell when he's going to go for a slash. When uh, he starts walking towards you. If he starts side strafing and acting weird. He's probably going to try and shove you. But this is where I, I use the whistle on general. Pretty cool strat. We want to pull him over to this corner. To get him away from the other mobs. Then we're going to get an aerial deploy on him. This strat's kind of tricky. This is where we're going to be using more ash as well. It's actually not too bad. Pop a Yashi, wait for him to get to the corner. Aerial death blow. Now I, I always go for single jump model draws here. And then I jump back and firecracker. Single model draw, jump back firecracker. Single model draw. If you do two model draws, it actually... 
has a longer recovery time, and there's a chance he can catch you. Now this is where I start using Ash, because I've run out of spirit emblems. Pretty safe to use Ash. You just gotta learn his moveset. Be a bit careful. You're wondering why I was turning my camera to the side, I was dead angling him, like similar to what I was doing on Genny 1. You turn your camera to the side while performing a mortal draw or any regular attack. Uh, it actually, enemies can't block you, so you, you, you get more damage in. Also it's pretty important because not only does it do more damage, it actually staggers them for longer. If an enemy blocks you or blocks your mortal draw, uh, they can actually recover quicker and catch you before you can get away. Yeah, of course, now we're going back and getting the flower. If you just warp back to previous idols straight after picking up the flower, it'll warp you straight back to abandoned dungeon entrance. Because it, it just automatically unlocks this idol. You don't need to talk to the merchant yet. I always pick up the gold here while I'm running past. Because, you like, again, you'll need the gold for later. Uh, you can just run straight past this red guy. He, he'll never hit you no matter what RNG he gives you. Uh, I pick up the pellets there. Pellets are pretty helpful in this category if you're using the ceremonial Tanto. It allows you to heal up a bit so you can pop a Tanto. More Yashi Sugar. Kill this fish for the treasure cup. Now when you grapple up here, just stand still for a second, wait for the Lone Shadow to jump down, then jump up. If you move forward, that Lone Shadow will try and hit you. Uh, you can pop a Garchi in here for safety, it's unnecessary, I just, I don't, just so I can save Garchi in for later. As long as you jump as soon as you land here, the Shuriken will miss you. The Lone Shadow behind you actually throws the Shuriken at you. As, as long as you jump every time, he'll actually miss. But if you pop a Garchin, he won't, he won't throw a shuriken at you. Bit of a speedrun shred here on Al. Pop the confetti. And I get him in the corner. With one hit parries. Push him back. Uh... Depending on what RNG you get, it's, it can be a lot easier to get him in here. You don't have to do this strat, it's kind of risky. But uh, again, it's a speedrun strat. Once you get him in there, he's pretty much fucked. There's many different strats for Al, he's probably the most diverse when it comes to no-hit strats. I used to do sort of a strat where I would only bait out running attacks and I would just step dodge through them and get a couple hits and then back off that's probably the safest way you can do it other than this and probably my second favorite way of doing this fight of course just be careful on the phase 2 transition he will stagger you when he does that slam he does like a bit of a stomp attack do not get hit by that because that counts as a hit <laughs> And also he throws a smoke bomb at the beginning of phase 2, which you have to iframe, otherwise he can catch you and hit you. But yeah, there's many, there's at least like 5 owl strats I know. Many different ways to fight them, just find whatever way you feel is comfortable. Oh no, this is the fun part. Dialogue. There's a lot of dialogue here. Um, just remember to uh, to eavesdrop Kuro after you do this dialogue part. Very important. If you forget to do this before you kill Dragon, you won't be able to access Hirata 2. So you won't be able to fight Lone Shadow or Juzo 2 or Father Al, and you'll be locked out of being able to finish the run, basically, and the run is dead. So I rest here to spawn Emerin, pop the memory. You don't need to get any more skills.
Appreciate it. Cool. Now this is where I eavesdrop on him. I always hide behind this wall. Eavesdrop on him. That's literally all you have to do. And then just rest. This will uh, send Emma upstairs. You need to talk to her again. You gotta talk to Emma a lot, basically. Kind of dumb. Once you've selected that first dialogue, you have to rest again. Hey, no worries, Adams. Hi, welcome to Chili's. Talk to her again. Once she gives you Tomoe's note and you exhaust the dialogue, that's all you need to do for this part. You need to rest again. Make sure Emma disappears. That's how you know you've exhausted her dialogue. Oh, I don't think I even checked. <laughs> I already knew. Sekiro Shadow is literally... I think Sekiro Yo. Shadow has, become, has the reputation of, like, the next Geno. Pick up the Gachin here. And he's doing Safely to send down. Do. And he's Exhaust the dialogue, and then walk back to... And dreamy and, like, Temple. For, like, the average American. We're just like, wow, dude, that Sorry, I should have muted my alerts. Uh, thanks for the sub, Adams. I appreciate it, dude. Welcome to the Covenant. Enjoy the emotes. Appreciate it, dude. Um, okay, so... Uh, I pick up the, the coin purse here. Not really necessary. Just extra cash. You want to eavesdrop on Sculptor. This is all necessary to get the Father's Bell so you can go to Harada 2 later. Go to Emma. Second option. First option. As soon as you get the bell, you can just back out of a dialogue. You actually, you won't like fall into the abyss if you jump from the top there down to Emma. You'll just take hard fall damage, which doesn't really matter, it's just speed. Yeah, walk back to the wedding room, whatever it's called. Now we're going to Fountainhead, of course. Monk is pretty easy. Like, on Bell Demon no Kuro's Charm, she's a bit tougher. If you're just doing a regular hitless run, she's really free. Like, you actually don't have to deflect her once if you follow these strats. Pop Confetti, Pop Yashi, Grapple to the left branch, don't jump until she lands, otherwise you'll get staggered. One, two, three, four, Firecracker, you can get like three hits in. I really, the part I hate about this is the Chasing Slice, or Chasing Slash, whatever it's called, I actually don't like having that skill. Uh, the only reason I have it is because you must unlock it to get mid-air prosthetics. Just try to keep centered on her, get three hits in. Since this is Bell Demon no Kuro Sham, I won't have enough spirit ones to finish her off. So I've got to finish her off by fighting her straight up, which isn't too bad. Because we've already gotten rid of most of her health. Yeah, if you're, if you're doing regular hit list, you will have enough spirit ones to actually finish her off. Uh... Like, without even having to fight her. Don't jump up to the branch straight away. Wait a couple of seconds. Because sometimes she glitches out. And she doesn't go into, like, the shadow realm mode like this. 
and she'll just try to hit you. So be, be super careful though. Oh, confetti, Yashi. I always get behind her for safety. Now you can just cheese this entire phase with Ash. I use all 10 of my Ash. Because phase 3 is uh, kind of sketchy. You kind of you don't want to be fighting this phase straight up. But uh, yeah, again, if you're doing regular hitless, it only takes like 7 Ash to do phase 3. Easy. And that's with Arco Sugar too, I think. Rest of the idol to uh, get your spirit emblems back, refill them, pop the memory. Now, I always use a Garchin Sugar here. Um, it's pretty... I, I would definitely recommend using a Garchin Sugar here. There's multiple things that can go wrong here if you don't use it. You can get, like, hit by archers. You can get sucked off by the Miss Nobles. Or the Nobles. You can, uh, you can get these Lightning Dogs to hit you in the back. Um... If you fall into the water here, by failing this wall jump, the fish can attack you. I would just make sure you use a guard chain. That wall jump can be pretty tricky. If you do fall into the water, the uh, Okami leader will actually, will actually try to shoot lightning at you. If, he do if she does that, just hide behind the building. Uh, and it's, it's pretty safe. Make sure you rest at this idol. I actually uh, forget to do something here, but usually there's like a hidden room there with scales in them. I forgot to get them. I usually I usually get them before Bull 2 here, but I forgot, so I actually backtrack and get them later. Yeah, if you uh, if you firecracker Bull 2 before he sees you, he'll actually go straight into rage mode. You can get a nice easy kill. There's more Yashi Sugar and another Bulging Coin Purse here. I just walked back to previous here. And this is where the run starts to get a little harder. Doing Yashi Headless was one of the most troublesome bosses for me. Ended probably most of my runs. But I did find the most consistent way of dealing with it. Why'd you endure it, Krisha? You don't need to pop a Garchi in here. Uh, as long as you follow the exact way I do, you won't get hit. Those archers won't be able to hit you. Jump straight down here. These guys won't be able to hit you either. Just hug the left side. I'm gonna do this nice and quickly. Now grapple onto these two. Grapple once there and grapple twice there. Wait for him. Wait for Okami to shoot the first soccer ball. Come out, wait for at a medium distance. Then as she jumps up, shuriken her out of the air. Now she won't be able to fight back, and you can just stun lock her to death. Now this is a tricky part. Pick up the bulging coin purse, pop a garchin, pop confetti. Now when as soon as you dive into the water, you want to sort of swim di diagonally down to headless. Eight times. So I, I kind of, uh, I'll explain this a bit better. You need to make sure you, you swim at the right 
the right path down to headless to keep it consistent. So the way I do it is I, I sort of keep headless above my character's head so I can see headless like just above my head, if that makes sense. See how you can see him? Seven, eight, dodge. Now he'll, he'll either shoot like the little tendril projectiles or he'll shoot the one big slash projectile. If he shoots the little tendrils, you want to just swim directly underneath him. Just get underneath his gut and they actually won't hit you and they won't be able to boomerang back around. And then you can just hit him four times and back off. If he does this attack, you want to just dodge past him. I hit him three times. Backstep. You can come in and hit him about ten. Ten times is a safe is a safe strike. You can actually get eleven, but I'd go for ten. One, two, three. You can get three hits after the stagger. He'll either do this grab attack or he'll do his slash attack. You can get in eight hits safely. Backstep. You have like you actually have plenty of time to read whether he's gonna do a slash or a grab, so don't don't be too hasty. But you do actually have to kill Yashi Headless pretty quickly. Uh, otherwise your Garchim will run out and the its twin will see you and shoot projectiles at you. And you will die. So yeah, you just saw I picked up a couple more carp scales there. Come up, kill this. Up. I actually like failed miserably at catching the carps in this run, I think. So yeah, even if you fail to catch the carps and they disappear, don't worry, they will respawn. You don't even have to warp out to, to make them respawn. If you just wait around, they will just appear, they'll, they'll just reappear. So I usually just hide in the weeds here. And see, they reappear. Couldn't quite catch the second one. You don't have to hide in the weeds. They they'll reappear regardless. Now there's three more scales in this building. All right, now we've got to swim past the great carp. You just follow the exact same way I do. It's pretty chill. Like, I've never been aggroed by him doing it this way. It looks like it's pretty close though, but he never aggroes. Just slow it down a bit there. Stay on his back. Slow it down a bit here. You should be all G. Even if he does aggro you whilst doing that last swim, you should be able to make it inside the building safely in time. Grab the idol. Now this is where we're going to buy Dragon Mask. Or one of the pieces of the Dragon Mask. There's more confetti on the ground here. So buy the dragon mask piece. Now you want to warp back to abandoned dungeon entrance. Now we have enough money to buy the the piece from the merchant there. Sell all your gold. I always buy two Nibu balloons here. Possession balloons. This will just make it a lot easier to farm Garchin later on in the run. 
It increases your item discovery, basically. Yeah, we're back to dilapidated. Um, you wanna you wanna talk to the merchant here. I I pick up the pellets. Um, buy two pacifying agents. You're gonna need that to fight the shishman later on. And just spend the rest of your money on snap seeds. You don't need a ten, but you can get you can hold up to ten at once. So just buy as many as you can. You're gonna need them for butterfly later on. I grab this idol so I can go back to it later. Be careful when you're descending down here. If you miss this grapple and you fall into the abyss, uh, that does count as a hit, so be careful. There's a few cards we gotta kill here to get the remaining scales. Now this is where I actually, uh, oh, I think I failed miserably here too, yeah. Yeah, I, I really screwed up killing the cops in this run. Which I've like never done before. It just happened to be the run, dude. Now it's, I've got to be embarrassed while people watch the VOD. Um, but yeah, I, I realized I actually forgot a few scales here and I had to backtrack. go get the ones at Fountainhead. Yeah, I was not having a good time with the underwater combat. Let's just hope Elden Ring isn't like this. This is where I realized I didn't have enough scales. I was very confused for a bit. <clears throat> I guess I'll just skip to where I, I go find the scales. Yeah, I, I tried to go back and find the scales, no avail. I then walked back. Uh, so you want to come back to this idol if you. I mean, you should have got these scales before you killed Bull or after you killed Bull too. That's the most efficient way of doing it. But yeah, I kind of forgot. So yeah, if you grapple up here, There's this hidden room with three scales in it. Now we can uh, go back and buy the mask. Alright, so now, now that we have all pieces of the mask, we can actually increase our attack power. Uh, for every five levels you have, you can increase your attack power, as you see here. And to enhance attack power. Skill points, so you can get three more attack power here before you fight Ape 2. Which is really good. Now walk back to Hidden Forest. So this is where we fight Double Ape. Now Double Ape, you can actually cheese really easily in regular hitless. Like you can just mortal draw the shit out of them. I'm not gonna show you this strat though. I'll show you the the normal way of fighting them. If you're doing Bell Demon or Curious Charm, this is the way you have to fight them. So equip your spear, 
I always pop a Yashi Shogo. You can get nine hits in here and it staggers him. You can get a 10th hit back off. So yeah, basically fighting phase one the same way you fought ape one. With the spear, he does really quickly. Ape two, uh, I mean, phase two is when it gets more complicated. So this arena is a lot smaller than the first arena. So it's a lot easier to get caught by the scream. So just be wary of your surroundings. Make sure you've always got enough room to move. Uh, like enough room behind you to move around. So now he's got to call in his mate. You want to get your firecrackers out. Get your Yashi ready. So in phase two, they, they these bosses actually work together in a certain way. They sort of correlate with each other. When the white ape screams, brown ape will always charge you. And then after the white ape screams, he actually idles and he won't he won't be aggro. So you have a time to kill the brown ape. You kind of just have to run around until you bait out this scream. The scream is a follow-up attack, which means you have to get close to him after he does an attack to bait it out, as you'll see here. See how I get close to him after he swings to try and bait out the scream? Kind of just want to do that. Firecracker the ape, jump mortal draw. Get a death blow. Sometimes the brown egg glitches out and you won't she won't be death blowable. If that happens, just firecracker her and it'll break her posture again. And then you can get the, the death blow safely. The best strat I figured out for it. Yeah, like they sort of brown ape and white ape correlate with each other, like certain attacks that the white ape will do will cause the brown ape to charge you. You kind of just have to figure them out. And just be careful, like the brown ape can launch across the map and try and do a jump attack on you. So you just look out for that. You can just outspace it by sprinting away. Yeah, like brown ape, sort of brown ape won't attack you unless white ape does certain attacks that causes uh, brown ape to charge. And same with like white ape, like if white ape screams, that causes brown ape to charge you and then white ape won't attack you until brown ape finishes charging you. Kind of, you just gotta figure it out. I can't show you every single RNG, but they, they don't actually attack you randomly. They do, they are programmed to fight you a certain way. Yeah, pop the, the memory you just got from them. Walk back to Abandoned Dungeon. Hey, thanks, Duck. Pop you, Yashi. So... Obviously, like, from uh, after we killed Yashi Headless, we're pretty much... We're using Yashi Spiritfall, and not Yashi Sugar. We, we're saving our Sugar for later. For bigger bosses that require more Spirit Emblems. Um, I'll, I'll show you the strat again. It's actually pretty specific the way I do it. If you get one model draw, and then one, two model draw, jump back, Firecracker. Jump forward, model draw. It's pretty consistent. That always works for me. Because once you get the first model draw, um, he actually like does his animation where he pulls his, he unsheaths his sword. And then you can safely get two more model draws. Again, if, you, if you're playing regular hit lists, like most of these mini bosses will die a lot quicker. And you probably won't even need to use firecrackers. Grab the bulging coin purse, pop the Yashi. Confetti, equip the finger whistle. This is a bit of a safety strat. Pacifying agent. If you use a whistle, it actually uh, 
he he starts like spawning in these orbs. There's actually a chance that these orbs will hit you like when you run run up and approach him. So by whistling him, it gets rid of those orbs, eliminates the possibility of getting hit. One, two, three, four, five. Firecracker. I always wait a second so I don't do the chasing slice. Six, seven. I think it was eight hits her. You want to strafe around the back of him so he doesn't parry you. If he parries you, he'll teleport away. Becomes a lot more dangerous. You want to stand in that very specific spot I did there. One, two, three, four, five. Ash. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Dead. So you can get one fire crack on him and, and one ash on him. Don't try to do both. Don't try to do two firecrackers or two ash. He won't stun from both of them. You're going to do one of each. So just to, just make sure you watch where I popped that Yashi. Because you sort of want to be... You've got a bit of a visual cue uh, with where you popped the Yashi. Um, to know like where he's going to teleport to next. As long as you stay in the same spot every time, he'll he'll always teleport to the same spot. It kind of works the same as um. What's his name? Like Aldrich from Dark Souls Three. There's like scripted teleportation locations depending on where you're standing. So now we're going to fight Seven Spears. I pop a Tanto here. Pop a Yashi. Wait for him to get to the bottom of these stairs before you death blow him, because you want to be fighting him on flat ground. Again, we're going to be doing this one model draw strat, and then jump back and firecracker. If he jumps, if he steps back to do this thrust, just stand back a bit. And punish him once he thrusts. Again, I'm doing those dead angles to the side to do more damage and to stagger him for longer. I, uh, I, I grapple up here before I warp out, just to make sure that, um, no mobs chase me. I have been hit before by a mob while I was warping out, so it's just safer to jump up to it. Alright, now we're going back to Hirata. <clears throat> What's up, new? This is where the run starts to get a little more scary. Now we're really ramping up the difficulty. But um, honestly, if you just follow the strats that I've made, I made these like the, the safest, most consistent strats possible. Especially if you're doing hard mode like Bell Demon No Curious Charm. It's just the safest way to deal with every RNG. So I always wait for this dog to walk past, wait a couple seconds, and then just sprint. There's a chance that this mob will do a back step. If he does that, just firecracker him and run past him. But usually you can just arm one him to death. Pop another Garchin here. Aerial death playing this guy. Now just wait. Just wait behind this guy. You want this Shinobi Hunter to sort of keep continuing his path so that he's in a certain spot. It's not very specific, you just. I'll explain why. These guys might follow you over, see the the guys with the yellow marker above there. They won't see you though. Backstab him once the hunters started walking away. Kill these two. Now if you waited long enough, the shinobi hunter will run up like the left staircase instead of the right, like you saw. If this if these shield guys follow you over, you can kill them if you want, you don't have to. Yeah, I always prefer Shinobi Hunter to run up that uh, staircase rather than the other one. 
uh, it pretty much gives you more time to get away so Shinobi Hunter doesn't see you. The Poppy Yashi. Self death blow, wait for him to start standing back up, and then get a jump model draw. You can go for a jump firecracker here. There's a chance he'll jump back though and do this RNG with a thrust attack. Pretty easy to make every counter. I'd probably spend a bit of time to learn that. It's it's really easy though. Otherwise you can just kill him with a model draw if you if you manage to stun him with the firecracker. Um, I always grab that idol. You don't need to, but I grab it just in case uh, things go south on Juzo 1 and I need to warp back. Otherwise, you have to run through the entirety of Hirata again, and you don't want to be wasting any more Garchins. So, I'm actually going for Miss Raven here. I would definitely recommend getting Miss Raven. It makes Ishin Phase 3 a lot easier. Uh, this Lone Shadow will jump down, and you can actually deal with him really safely. Sort of kite him down the hill. Jump off, grapple. He usually just falls to his death if you do it right. Takes a bit of practice to get that consistent, but... Pretty safe. What's up, Anatoly? What's up, peeps? I think this uh, recording is skipping a bit. I don't know why it does it. I swear I can never manage to record a really good quality video. But yeah, you can uh, you can grapple up from the water down here. I usually dive and then jump up. Really safe. You can avoid all the mobs by doing it this way. Oops, I bumped my mic. Get the key from L. Pop a gachi in here. This guy takes three swings to kill. I believe on regular hitless he only takes two. Yeah, but take out that guy. Just try and sort of hug the leftmost side here so you don't get aggroed. If you do get aggroed, it's no big deal. They shouldn't chase you over here. Backstab this guy. Kill this guy before he alerts everyone. This strat is kind of sketchy, but honestly, it's better than having to deal with all the mobs. Uh, I pop an Arco there just to get rid of my Garchin, so that I purposely alert Juzo here. Pop a Tanto. I heal just so that I don't die to fire or something. I actually have uh, died by environmental fire here before. Now if you bait him all the way to this corner here, this is sort of a spot where his AI will sort of start trying to return back to its original position. So if you run back here and pop a Yashi, he should lose aggro. Now you can safely backstab him while he's walking back. Now I have a really safe model draw strat for this. I sort of just bait out certain RNG where I can safely punish him with jump model draws. You might, you kind of just have to learn what RNGs are safe, what ones don't have follow ups and stuff and such. Just be careful. You don't have much room to move around here. If he gets close, just try and sort of bait out an attack and dodge it. Don't get too close to him. But you don't want to stray too far from this place either, because you'll aggro the other mobs. So you kind of you kind of got to like stay close to him, but not too close. Bait out the follow up. 
and he's dead. So you might need to pop some more ceremonial tantos to get more spirit emblems for this. That's that's fine. Should be able to do that safely. Pop the pellets or the healing god if you need to. So you can pop the tanto. You can just run straight past these mobs, they won't hit you. They don't have projectiles. I always rest here. Hug the right wall so this archer doesn't see you straight away. Make sure you equip your snap seeds. Pop the Tanto. Pop a Yashi Sugar for this fight. I always hide behind this left pillar here to avoid the shurikens. I firecracker her when she gets close. Phase one, just you can play it pretty easily, just you know. Um don't R1 too quickly, that's my best advice. If you do it too quickly, she will sweep you and kill you. Do it nice and slow. If she jumps up on the Y like that, she'll always jump behind you. I actually got pretty good RNG there. That sometimes she'll throw shurikens at you. Like mid combo. Best thing you can do is just iframe forward through it, like step dodge through it. Pretty easy. Pop a Yashi, switch to your snap seeds. Wait for it to jump down. Jump model draw, jump model draw. I run up to the middle of these apparitions, snap. I got pretty unlucky with the RNG here, but usually I just hide behind the pillar. And usually she, uh, slowly approaches me and uh, I wait for her to start like running up to me usually she goes for a sweep attack uh, you can just firecracker her and then jump mortar drawer and she's dead a bit more like complicated it's kind of hard to explain how I do it but uh, it's not too bad oh I think I went to the toilet here Yeah, usually I hide behind the pillar in phase two, um, just in case she throws shurikens at you. And then, yeah, like I said, just wait for her to approach you. Um, when she starts, like, running up to you, it's pretty much certain that she's going to go for a, uh, a sweep. So you can always safely get a, a firecracker in and then just jump behind her. Hit her directly with the mortal draw and you do me like mega damage. Make sure you jump behind her though when you go for that mortal draw because if you try to mortal draw her from the front she will block it and you will do significantly less damage. But you should do enough damage to finish her off. I think I went AFK for a bit here so I'll just skip. Where I get back. There we go. Go Khan Strat. I've never really gotten it to work in speedruns. I don't know what I do differently. I guess I, I fight the bosses in a different order. So it doesn't glitch out Go Khan. Yeah, I uh, pop your memory, rest to, to replenish your spirit emblems. Uh, I would usually, I would usually um, equip the Miss Raven, or not equip it, but I would, you know, I would get the Miss Raven from the sculptor at this point, but I forgot to. I actually completely forgot to get Miss Raven for for the rest of the run, so. I had a bit of a tougher phase 3-ish and 
If you run up to land Shadow here, wait for him to begin to whistle. Hit him with a shuriken just before he whistles and he'll chase you. If you bring him down here, kind of like the Juzo strat, he, he will try to return to his original position. But he actually can't fight you back for some reason, so you can kind of just cheese him. I'm dead angling here to kill him quicker. But yeah, just um, don't let him get up too high, like up the hill, back to his original position, because he will fight back. Uh, and also, don't don't get him to don't let him get too far down the hill, because you don't want those other mobs to aggro you. You can kill those mobs if you want first with like blood smoke, but kind of unnecessary. Dead angling is hitting the an enemy at an angle where they can't block you. So yeah, I uh, I grapple up this way. It's just a lot safer going this way rather than just going straight through the fire. Papagachin. Equip the uh, the finger whistle. Hug the left side again. Whistle of a learned shadow. Grapple up onto the rock. And you can get a nice easy aerial death flow on him. Now this will aggro Juzo, so you just run back behind these rocks. He will lose aggro. And again you can get a sort of nice easy mortal draw strat on Jizo. This one's actually much comfier than the first Jizo because you got more room to work with. Pop a Yashi, you get a backstab. So you don't want to punish that attack because he can follow it up. You can punish this one. Punish that. The grab has a long reach, so just be careful. Don't punish that, it has a follow up. That's probably his most dangerous attack. That has a follow up too, don't punish that. Don't punish that. Punish that. Punish that. Don't punish when he side strikes like that. I I don't punish it because it's kind of sketch. You want him to be like walking backwards. Punish that. This is like the safest way of fighting Juzo, like. A lot safer than fighting him in a straight up deflect battle. Because he has some really scary attacks. Like his foot stomps and stuff. Um, I kill this guy just for safety. You can just run straight past this other guy. Um, hide behind the wall. This is a safe way of doing it. You can just uh, sneak up on this shinobi hunter guy. This monk with a spear.
Rest. Pop a turn two. So the positioning here is pretty important. If you sort of sit on his back right side when you get this mortal draw, it usually causes him to do this sweep attack every time. You can get a dead angle there. You can get a lot of mortal draws in on this fight and it really speeds it up. I fight Al pretty aggressively. I find this is the safest way to do it. If you try to stall too much, um, it, it can get pretty dangerous. Now if you if you watch there, he goes for an Ichimanji attack. If you actually strafe to the side when he goes for an Ichimanji attack, um, he'll switch to a regular attack. And you can actually stagger him out of it. Jump model draw, jump back, pop a Yashi. I always deflect his Al attack here, because then he always follows up with a sweep or an Ichimanji that you can punish with a model draw. He actually gets stuck on a pillar here, it's pretty scary. But I would have uh, I would have punished it again with another model draw. In phase two, his moveset slightly changes. I mean the only major thing that changes is he can throw shurikens when he kicks off you. So just be wary of that. I wanna highlight something pretty important as well. When he does this attack. You can actually do a thrust attack to thrust straight through those firecrackers and it's, it's really consistent. You won't get hit and he won't teleport away. So it, it's, it really speeds it up and makes it a lot more comfy. You, you won't have to even dodge the firecrackers. So just do a thrust and you'll... F it's really easy. Makes him teleport way less as well. Pop the memory. You also have enough XP to buy a, uh, well... You get another memory with a dragon mask as well. Warp back to Outlook, I believe it is, at Ashina Castle. You want to make sure you have enough Garchin by this point. You want to have at least two Garchin for this. Uh, otherwise, you'll have to go back and farm. Which you will have to do eventually anyway. Well, like, I'll explain why you want at least two Garchi in here. Copy Yashi. Now you can get an aerial death blow on the Ogre here. Ogre's really comfy here. You just get a one model draw, Firecracker, two model draws, and then get three hits in. You can always safely get three hits. And then just wait for whatever follow-up he does. You probably don't even have to do that second dodge. You can always finish him off. After one dodge. Okay, Ungo Headless. This one's a lot, like, safer than Yashi Headless. But uh, just watch what I do. I dash once, dash twice, and then do, like just watch for whatever sort of opener he gives me. He gave me the uh, multiple tendril attack. Again, you can just, with both RNGs, you can sort of just get behind him and finish him off very quickly. Pretty easy.
Be careful here. Like, the, there's always these mobs fighting each other. There's a chance they could hit you. Pick up the Yashi Sugar. Uh, you want to equip your spear for this. I mean, at least if you're doing the same shirt I do, it's pretty, pretty chill. Copy Yashi. I mean, Garchin, sorry. Now Papa Yasha, you get the backstab. Now this is where you use the spear. If you actually use the spear here at the beginning of the fight, he will always back off and pop his Yashi Sugar. I don't know why, but he just does for some reason when you use the spear. Yeah, you can just jump Firecracker in. Like, you can punish him while he's using the Yashi Sugar. Like, and when he uses the Yashi Sugar, it actually reduces his... Vitality. Whoa. So that's why it's good to punish him there. So the reason I wanted to Garchin is so we could pop them both there. So we popped the first one for Land Shadow. Now we're popping the second one to safely get past the gunman that we just went past. Now for some reason, this is pretty consistent for me, but... Gokan Headless seems to glitch out if I perform the same actions every time from fighting Ogre 2 all the way to coming down here. If you don't see any slowing miss, that means he's glitched out and he won't fight back. Sometimes he can rarely like shoot tendrils out, but as long as you stay in front of him, they won't hit you. I don't know why this happens. It's pretty consistent though if you do exactly the same thing I did. Apparently this doesn't happen to anyone else, but I think it's just the unique way that I do this area. But otherwise, just... If he doesn't glitch out, just approach him the same way I did. You can, uh, you can start the fight with a nice sort of strafe around him and deal a lot of damage. See, if you didn't have two Garchin, like I said, and you sort of had to warp out halfway, like after killing Lone Shadow, and then came back, it would ruin the, uh, the Gokan Headless glitch, and he wouldn't glitch out like that. So, yeah, I don't know why, but, uh, we're now out of Garchin, so we will have to Garchin farm uh, later on once I get to seven spears. Because that's when we need to use Garchin next. So I always kill these dogs just to make sure they don't chase me. While I'm fighting General. I don't know why the video is skipping like that. I can never record a good video. Get an aerial death blow. Do the safe shots again. One model draw. Jump firecracker. Two model draws and he's dead. And again, I, I grapple up to safety just to make sure no one's following me. Now warp to Ashna Outskirts um, Stairway. This is the idol we got very early in the run. You don't need a guard chain for this. Uh, they will aggro, aggro you here. Just wait a second. Uh, you'll hear like some gunshots. I don't know why. For some reason when gunman mobs aggro you, they for some reason just randomly shoot. Even if they can't see you, they wait for them to shoot. And then you want to whistle. The reason you got to wait for them to shoot is because... Their, their gunfire actually draws the attention of the general. 
So if you whistle first and then they shoot, uh, it'll just draw the general away. So yeah, you wanna you wanna whistle him, lure him over here. Pop your Tanto, pop your Yashi, get an aerial death blow. Fight him like usual. Single mortar draw, jump firecracker. This one's a bit tankier. You might have to do a couple of firecrackers. There's a chance he'll jump back and try to use posture recovery, just be careful of that. Try not to let him get it off, otherwise you might have to use Ash to finish him off safely. As long as you kind of keep him cornered, you should be able to firecracker him before he can posture recover. Oh god, the VOD skipping. Alright, this is where the, the run gets a lot harder, too. This is where we actually have to fight Headless for real. Pop Yashi, pop Confetti. If you jump down exactly this way, sort of more to the left, you can get in one aerial shot and three regular shots. He actually almost got me there, which he never usually swings that quickly. You kind of just have to learn Headless for yourself. I can't really explain to you well, every single RNG, but you just got to learn to deflect it. Don't be too aggressive. Only punish when you know it's safe. He did a really big combo here. But you kind of have to kill them relatively quickly before your confetti runs out or you're screwed. I always jump when he teleports just to make sure I get into a safe position out in the open. You don't want to be near a wall when he teleports. That's the best advice I can give you because uh, if you're near a wall, he can pretty much just insta teleport and insta grab you. I don't know why, but he does. Headless is probably the hardest boss in the entire run. It's just, he's pretty much uh, designed to be unfair. I believe I accidentally aggroed the chicken here, so I, I warped out. You don't want this chicken to be aggroed because he can actually chase you down the bottom to where the headless is and attack you. Either that or he will alert the headless. And the headless can actually hear the rooster and, and uh, will face you before you even jump down there. The no head. Now, I begin this fight in a very specific way. I practice this a lot, and it's really hard to get it off. I actually managed to successfully pull it off, though. You can actually get, like, five or six hits here while strafing around him. Just getting those few extra hits at the beginning of the fight really makes it a lot easier. Because you can get that stagger off pretty early. And then finish him off. I sort of get behind him to push him out into the open more. So I've got more room to work with. Now, Garchin Headless is pretty tanky, so I actually rebuff here. Because you don't, you don't want to be running out of confetti. That's the last thing. If you run out of confetti, you're dead. Because then you can't deflect him. You can sort of safely rafe around him every time he teleports. Headless takes a lot of practice. It's the boss I it's definitely the boss I practice the most. Like every time every day I ran this, I practice headless at the beginning of the stream. It can be pretty frustrating, but definitely learnable. Like it headless kind of feels unfair where like even if you get good at it, there's a lot of things that can just meme you. You've just gotta try and eliminate as many inconsistencies as possible. Alright, so Shishman 2, basically the same as Shishman 1. I think I took a minute here because I was kind of freaking out that I got past the headless.
But yeah, um, Obiashi, Bob Confetti, Bob Pacifying Agent, Whistle, jump down, so the orbs are gone now. One, two, three, four, five, Firecracker, wait. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Run to this exact spot on the rock again. This will make him teleport to the same spot. Switch to Ash. One, two, three, four, five, Ash. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Dead. That's honestly the safest way you can do Shishman. Yeah, I, I discovered that Whistle Strat myself actually like yes like the day I got the run yesterday, just before the stream, I was like, I need to figure out a safer way of doing this. I tested a whole bunch of things. I tried like getting an aerial death blow on him from up top. I tried like throwing ceramic shards at him. I tried I actually tried to use the whistle to pull him closer to me so that I could get the aerial death blow from the cave. And I ended up just I realized that it got rid of the orbs and I was like, hang on a minute. So I kind of accidentally discovered that myself. Yeah, I don't know why the, the VOD's skipping like this. It's not a VOD, it's a, it's a recording on my PC. And I, I can navigate it to record smoothly for some reason. Yeah, now we're going back to fight Dragon. Dragon's pretty easy. Just play Dragon really safe, you really don't want to be losing the run to Dragon this late in. Just do not speed it. Uh, I pop confetti so I can kill the dragons quicker. You only have to kill one. And just killing one causes them to start spawning in trees. So you can just safely run around in a circle. I actually <laughs> missed the death blow there. That scared the shit out of me. But um... Nah, uh, dragon's pretty chill. Like, when you're actually fighting dragon, just... The safest thing you can do is just only go for one lightning at a time. Don't try to chain them together. Oh god, what is this shitty recording? Why does this happen? Someone tell me how to do a recording without it being bad. Yeah, I had a couple of times in this run where it froze for a couple of seconds. Oh god, I keep skipping, that's so bad. Sorry. You can teach me how to record stuff? How? How do you how do you do it in good quality? I've tried like a bunch of different settings and it's just shit. You can push you can pop uh, Yashi Spirit Falls in this fight whenever you want. Whenever you can do it safely, it just speeds up this lightning phase a bit. I did something naughty here. I actually, I actually chained the lightning together. If they're right next to each other, it's not, it's not that bad. But honestly, you should only go for one lightning at a time because sometimes it glitches out and the lightning can just go straight through a dragon and not hit him, and you'll get hit. Oh god, stop. The 
Okay, how can it be so hard to record, but I can stream just fine? No, it doesn't count as a hit. Yeah, if the if the dragon gust hits you, no, it doesn't count as a hit. Neither does uh the um what are they called? Lloyd's talismans on Al the anti healing bombs they don't count as hits. Yeah, um, with the final phase of dragon, just sort of stay to the back wall and you can kind of just outrun the flurry and jump over the sweeps. Dragon's pretty self-explanatory. Get the key from Emma. Oh, you don't know, kid, and I thought you actually knew. I'm disappointed. Grab pellets. Oh my god, the skipping is annoying. You never get the grapple prompt. You have to hold forward on the stick uh, after you get that final lightning. So you just kind of hold forward while you're falling. Uh, you have enough XP here to, to uh, get another um, attack power. And you've also got the memory from Dragon that you can pop. So at this point I've got no more guard chain and I need guard chain for 7 spears so... Uh, this is when I'm gonna come back and warp to Shigendo Idol. And we're gonna start farming guard chain. It didn't take me too long, I only needed 2 guard chain. Yeah, just do it the same way you did it earlier. Pretty, pretty safe strat. Oh, I only just, I only just realized like what you meant, kitten. That's so bad. I only just clicked. Yeah, I forgot to pop the dragon memory there, so... Oh yeah, I forgot to rest. Whoopsie. I don't get like the the skipping is only happening in certain parts of the recording. I mess around with a bunch of settings and I could never get it right. Anyway, we got enough Gachi now, so walk back to Ashina Reservoir. Pop a guard chain. Make sure you've got blood smoke equipped. Backstab the mob, not the boss. Blood smoke him. Now if you run over here, seven spears will lose aggro. I 
I popped a Tanto as well. The so same strat as before. Pop a Yashi. Single model draw, jump firecracker. Single model draw. And he's dead. And I, I always go for those dead angles, like I said. Just uh, staggers him a little longer to get away safely. Now this is where I would check, uh, I would rest here as well to refill your stuff. Um, this is where I would check to see if you've got Miss Raven. I would equip Miss Raven. Uh, it makes, like I said, phase three ish and a lot easier. I actually forgot to uh, to get it, but it's fine. Pop a Tanto, pop a Yashi. You can start the five jump model draw. This is a bit of a speed run strut. Again, he's pretty self-explanatory. Yeah, like I, I again, I'm not gonna exp like try and explain to you every single RNG. You kind of just have to learn. I can only give you tips, really. Um, so for phase two and three, Ishan, we, you know, I always go for one hit parries. That's the best advice I can give you. One hit parries like this uh, is the safest way to do it. I always iframe, like step dodge through that jump attack. Then I can get two hits in. I can get a direct hit and then direct hit and then another hit and he'll block it. Pretty easy. So usually you would use Miss Raven to uh, avoid the lightning and do lightning reversals. But uh, I forgot to, so I had to just step dodge through the lightning. Sometimes Ishan can like whiff and his attack will go through you. Uh, in that case, you have to deflect his spear follow up. So just be wary of that. It usually happens when you're, when you're on the cliff. Man, I wish this recording wasn't so shit. I I need to figure out why it does this. Pop memory. Warp to Kuro's room. So I, I created a really safe strat for uh, Elite 2 here. Honestly, I love it. I would I would recommend using this strat. Because um, you, you really don't want to be trying to deflect Elite this far into the run. Especially if you're nervous. Oh, my game froze here for a second. Shit my pants. Oh yeah, you can get a backstab on him. If you sit in this corner, he actually can't reach you. 
This is actually more complicated than it looks, so... You want to sort of be hard up against the back right corner, but you need to let go of your analog stick once you're in there. Because if you're like holding back on the stick, your character is sort of like shuffling into the corner, and he actually will be able to hit you if you're shuffling. You have to be standing completely still. So you have to let go of your stick before he swings, otherwise you're dead. Don't know why, but it's it's actually very tight. So this is a bit more complicated than it looks. And people ask me why don't I get the death blow as soon as I break his posture. Uh, for some reason it's kind of buggy and it doesn't let you get the death, the death blow half the time. So I found that the safest way of doing this is just fully depleting his health bar. Um, and then just firecracking him and finishing him off. Yeah, sorry for the skippy video. I don't know why it's like this. This is really bad. Probably not ideal for a tutorial video on YouTube. But, uh... Yeah, my game froze again here. Firecracker him. And then get the Deppler. And that's a lot more... For some reason that Deppler is a lot easier to get than just trying to get him the other way. This looks really bad to watch. It's really annoying. So this, this fight's a little scarier. Papatanto, Papayashi... Blood smoke him. Mortal draws. So he, I got pretty bad RNG there. He goes for uh, posture recovery and then he fucking always hits you with his shuriken here. I only just dodged that. Like, I, I never. He never usually does that. It's extremely rare for him to even throw shurikens. Uh, and then in phase two, you just go for like one hit parries. Pretty, you don't want to be like R1 uh, mashing him because he can do poison attacks and they're really scary. And they're hard to deflect. And even if you do deflect them, they can poison you. The one hit parries is the safest way to do it. I'm going to need to ask someone how they record videos. Like how they record locally without it skipping like this, because I can never get it to come out good. I must have some of my settings wrong. <laughs> Grab the Garchin, pop a Garchin. Oh my god. Whoa, this is skipping a lot. What is happening? Okay. I might just Okay, I might just open my Twitch VOD. Give me a sec.
Alright. Sorry. I'm back. We're watching the Twitch vote now because apparently that recording was shit. I apologize. Um I'm gonna have to figure that. This should be a lot smoother. Um I'm not sure how the quality is gonna be, but Okay. Yeah, we we wanna jump down here. Grab Garchin, pop Garchin. Recorder couldn't keep up, really? Uh. uh, jump down here and rest. This would just make it a lot safer, it resets all the enemies. You can just run straight past these red guys, they won't hit you. I don't remember what I used for recording, it's been ages since I checked the settings. But yeah, it's OBS. I don't know what settings I have though. Maybe I just shouldn't record, maybe I should just... Uh, but recording locally is good for like safety in case you go offline. Yeah, anyway, come around here. This is a, just take the same path I did. Rest. Now, this is just a really safe way of dealing with Shigekichi. But also, this is a nice little XP for him. Um, it, it can get you just enough XP to get another attack power level. Make sure you've got Blood Smoke equipped. Yeah, that extra level did come in clutch. Having that extra level uh, gives you just a bit of safety. Hurricane that bell guy. On, on Shigekichi, there's a chance he'll give you like this rare RNG where he will not die the way he should. So having that extra attack power saves you. And I'll show you why. So just say I, I leveled up. So I just walked back and got that extra attack power. So I shouldn't be using OBS to record at the same time. Yeah, the reason I use blood smoke is obviously because the other red guy will uh aggro you. So again, you just want to shuriken this bell guy so he doesn't aggro everyone. Hide behind this wall, wait for this red guy to turn around. Backstab him. Alright, now this this uh Shigekichi Right, it's a very specific combo. Takes a bit to memorize, um, so I'll explain it as we go. I had to go through it in my head. So you want to pop a Yashi. Aerial Deplo. Frost Attack. Fear. R1, thrust attack, jump mortal draw, switch to firecrackers, jump firecracker, jump mortal draw, two mortal draws and he's dead. Now the reason I said you want that extra attack power, you watch here. Okay, so I, I do the I do one jump mortal draw here after the second spear. And then a jump jump backwards and firecracker. See how he started side strafing here? 
If he does that, instead of like trying to fight back, he actually recovers posture at a rapid rate. Uh, and he recovers just enough to tank your mortal draws there at the end. Those two mortal draws. He'll he'll survive it and he can actually just like hit you. If you get bad RNG. Like usually you can finish him off in time. But there is a chance you'll get bad RNG and, and he'll hit you or something. Otherwise I would just wait and parry whatever he throws at you. So you don't really need Garchim for this, just run straight through. I sell my gold here, buy as much confetti as I, I can get. You won't need to buy anything else now throughout the rest of the run. So now this is the big, the big bad boy of the run, Demon. This might be the hardest boss for some people. He's pretty tough. Uh, I rest to refill everything. Uh, if you haven't used your XP to get another level yet, the Shigakichi, use it now. Get your Yashi Sugars ready. This is a boss that you really want to be using Yashi Sugar. So that you have as many Spirit Emblems as possible for Mortal Draws. Pop a ton to. Wait for him to kill all the mobs and then he's going to walk over his original position. Um, and I'm sort of just preparing myself mentally here. As soon as he turns around, you want to sort of turn around and pop your Yashi. You can actually get a single R1 in here. Two jump model draws. Again. You can parry him in time when you're recovering from that. Even if he does his fastest attack, the double stump. Should be fine. Again, I'm not going to go into detail with this boss and its RNG. You just got to sort of learn it. You can iframe through that fire, 1, 2, deflect. And then usually you would have to iframe the fire again. At the beginning of phase 2, um, you can get a pretty big punish in. Don't get too close on the phase transition because he will stagger you. Pop a, pop a Tanto, pop a Yashi, he's going to go for a sweep. I can actually get underneath him and get like 8 hits in. I managed to get the good RNG where he does a slow turn. So I get eight hits. You basically just want to stay as close to Demon at all times as you can. Don't don't let him get too far away from you. Get the stagger. You can usually get five to six hits in on the stagger. If he does this, just back off, grapple it. Don't don't risk it by trying to get underneath him. You can iframe that or deflect it. Iframe that, one, two, deflect, iframe, thrust. Jump over the sweep. You can jump backwards and get an aerial hit in while he runs past you. I never punish that fire slam. I just wait for him. Yeah, whenever he jumps back like that, when you approach him, just don't attack him straight away. Just wait and see what he's going to do first. You always want to make make sure you read him like all the time or you will get cooked. The best advice I can give you on Demon is just watch your surroundings. You don't want to get stuck on like objects and you, you always want to make sure you've got a lot of open space behind you when he does sweeps. Otherwise, if he like hits a wall... He can sort of like insta fireball you. So this is a bit of a quick phase three strat. I'll go through it again. Lower.
So at the beginning of phase three, I uh, I pop my Yashi, and I I will jump forward and go for a jump mortal draw at a very specific frame. Don't do it straight away. Don't hold. Don't hold forward on the stick. Wait until okay. So he's seeing how he he raises his sword. As soon as he starts like lowering his sword, you see it like coming down. That's when you want to jump forward. That's when you want to push forward on the stick. Don't do it straight away. If you do it too early, demon will jump away from you. So pop that Yashi, wait for him to lower the sword. Then push forward. Jump mortal draw, that'll stagger him. You want to make sure you do this on flat ground, not on elevation. Otherwise you might get a partial. As soon as you see the symbol for the perilous attack, jump. Iframe in towards his left foot. You can get six hits in here. Two, three, four, five, six. And jump mortal draw again to finish him off. Now this strat varies depending on if you're doing Bell Demon or Kuro's Charm or in a regular hit list. You might be able to kill him a lot easier in regular hit lists. It's a lot riskier. On hard mode with that last fire circle you got to kind of get underneath his foot otherwise he can sort of hit you while he's whipping back around pop the memory go back to temple grounds this is the idol we got earlier the iframes, yeah, they're not that bad. Thanks for the congrats. Yeah, again, we want to take a safe path around here so we don't get aggroed by the rats. Go around here. You don't actually have to grapple all the way up to this tree like I did. I did it by accident. Just go like right around the edge of this temple so the rats don't see you. Pop a Garchin. As soon as this little centipede crawls up, you want to hit him with shurikens. You can just head stomp the rest of them. Just make sure you have enough shurikens to do two mortal draws on centipede. Yeah, make sure you kill all the little baby ones, otherwise they'll hit you. Okay, Yashi. Aerial Death Blue. And then you just all you have to do is jump auto draw and he's dead. As long as you've killed all the little baby ones, they won't be able to damage you. Tokujiro time. Now he's, I guess, a little scary, but he's pretty easy. Like, you've got so much damage at this point. Um, he dies pretty quickly, and you've got a lot of room to move around. It, it might look like a small arena, but you can safely, like, escape if you need to. You can sort of grapple away or grab onto a ledge. You shouldn't even need to, though. Like, he's never pushed me to a corner. I always kill him before you can even corner me. So make sure you pop a Yashi, if you, especially if you're doing hard mode, otherwise these monkeys will survive the shuriken. Aerial death blow. Jump mortal draw. Yeah, I'm doing like mega damage. Bait out the follow up. Mortal draw. Now I just need two more. And we got a good RNG here, so I just jump in and finish him off because I know I only need two more model draws. Oh, 
Lucky last. I didn't realize someone in chat said, put that crown down, it's ours now. Okay, Ots. Yeah, kill these dogs just to make sure they don't screw us over later. Pop confetti. Got pacifying agent, lock on, get the death blow, just makes it a lot more consistent. Now, I always pop the Yashi right here, next to this orb. Up to him. One, two, three, four, five. Now you can just start strafing random, he's always going to do this attack, it's really safe. Even safer than the other Shishman. And GG. Really gotta make sure you pop that pacifying agent because you will get hit by terror. And that's it. That's the run. It was a good day. I probably should have, uh, I, I probably should have recorded this from the Twitch VOD from the beginning. I didn't realize the, the record, my local recording was that bad. So there was a bit of, there was some skipping a bit, but, uh, I'm not going to re-record it. <laughs> I'm sure it'll be fine. It's just a tutorial. But, um, I hope this, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial anyway. But I hope it helps people. If anyone wants to run this in the future, I would love to see it. Definitely not an easy run. But I mean, even if you're running like smaller categories, like Immortal Severance, there should still be helpful strats in there. These are the most updated strats yet for no hit runs. Uh, the mortal draw strats are just insane. Like they make a lot of bosses easier. Yeah, I'll be going back to speed running. So I'll probably take tomorrow off. I haven't had a break in forever. Uh, and then I'll be back on Thursday, which is the beginning of my long weekend. And I'll probably be speedrunning. So. That should be fun. So yeah, I've got to, I've got to prepare for that. Kind of nervous to make the switch. Back to speedrunning. I don't know how it'll go, but I'll try my best. Try and get some world records. Yeah, that Shishman strat. The, the same same run that I showed off that Shishman strat was the run that I <laughs> I got the run. Nah, I'm going to bed. I've got work tomorrow. <laughs> so it's way past my bedtime. Alright. Let's uh Let's host someone up. Let's make someone else's night. 
Let's see. Um, he's alive. Dan Flesh. Red Dan Flesh. Yeah, no worries, guys. Thanks for thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Uh, I'll I'll be putting this on YouTube for everyone to use as a guide. Um, I'll see if I can get Ghost to put it on the website too. But again, yeah, thanks for uh, thanks for all the support. I really appreciate it. Again, like thanks for all the gift subs and everything yesterday. That really means a lot. We unlocked more emotes, which will be on the way soon. Pretty keen for that. Go say hi to Dan. He's a speedy boy. He he uh, does secure speed runs. He's doing Dark Souls Remastered at the moment. He's actually on a really good pace run. So uh, yeah, I will see you on Thursday. Have a good one. Love you. Peace.